What are the three things that will revolutionize the education system? Uh, if you're like me, you look back at your education and you're like, so many things were done wrong. And I was just reading an article that said U.S. student loan debt has now reached $1.2 trillion. That's just in the United States. And people are always talking about the global trade deficit and all that. That's at a, like $800 million in the U.S. This is $1.2 trillion that people owe uh, for all these loans. Some to private loans, some to government loans. By the way, I'm here in San Diego, enjoying, you can see the ocean out there a little bit. And I was just reading some articles, I was like, I gotta talk about this because I can think of three things off the top of my head that would, that had they happened to you and I when we were growing up, would have set our life on a completely different trajectory. Uh, been so much easier to be successful financially and all that. So let me give you the three. Number one, there should be a refund policy for universities. Joseph Stiglitz won a Nobel Prize as an economist and he wrote a book and he basically says he thinks that the current US educational system, the higher university system, qualifies as a scam because you can't get your money back. You know, Walmart, you they pioneered easy refunds. You don't even need a receipt. And people thought when they first started doing that, people were like, no, that's crazy. Everybody's going to want their money back. But people are more fair than you think. So if universities were offering refunds to people who felt like, hey, I spent four years of my life and possibly $40,000 or more on my education uh, and I can't even get a job. And in fact, I have no practical skill. Now, some people would say, what about liberal, uh, liberal arts education and so on? Look, that's great to get a liberal arts education, but you know a better way to get a liberal arts education? Know how to create an income for yourself and then travel the world. I mean, this is not the 1700s. So much of our education system is still tied to literally centuries-old uh, methodologies. Now you want to learn about ancient Egyptian history? Go to Egypt. Now... In order for that to be practical for millions of people, people have to have jobs because you can't travel if you don't have any money. So the, this refund policy would force universities to focus down on at the end of four years and 40 grand spent, people feel like, yes, I'm now going to get a return on my money. And they could have a refund policy with some fine print that says, you know, if you're able to get a job in the field that you majored in, then you can't qualify for the refund that would eliminate people who try to cheat the system but for people who go and they go to school and 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 then they come out and they can't get a job and they're part of 1.2 trillion dollars that's 1200 that's 1200 billion dollars in debt this is a major problem heads roll over 100 billion dollars we're talking now 10 times that 12 times that Number two thing that the education system, uh, that would revolutionize the education system would be if you would um, teach social and emotional IQ type lessons in elementary, junior, high school. Uh, public speaking, sales, conflict, how to deal with those things. How to read people so that you could find business partners, who to marry, who to date. There's so much progress has been done in psychological profiling. That could be taught. I wish I had learned that. I would have been interested in that stuff. In fact, students are more interested in cutting edge, uh, learning cutting edge things than that, like that than they are just in learning, you know, geography and social studies. Best way to learn geography? Travel the world. <laughs> you want to know, you want Americans to know the difference between Sweden and Switzerland? Have them not be in $1.2 trillion in debt so they have extra income to travel the world. That is what will change the world. So I am such a big believer that um, the problems are fixable. I have hope and I think that you already see these things. You know, one of my businesses, one of my companies is is an educa online education private company. It's not an accredited college. It's taking what accredited colleges haven't been able to do and offering those to people. So I've got a lot of experience in seeing how well this can work and you got to teach other stuff. You can't just teach geometry, isosceles, triangles. You can't just teach rote memory history like, you know, 
Civil War starts this year, ends this year. It, it, you can't just do that. You can't just make people memorize what the capital of each state is. If you need to know the capital of Montana uh, and you don't know it, it's not life-threatening. It's not career-ending. You can Google it. But if you don't have a practical skill how to start a business or if you're an employee, how to rise up in that business, if you don't have tangible skills in a career, you're not going to make any money. And one of my family members went to school, spent like 50, 60 grand in debt, four years for a, for a Spanish degree. And I said, why don't you just go live in Spain? You can actually get paid to learn Spanish and you'll learn better Spanish. You'll learn it faster. You'll learn it with, and, and it'll be more fun. So if you, you know, if the modern education system had an emphasis on practical skills all the way through, in addition to some abstract stuff, you're going to need some math, you're going to need a little bit of geometry and all that. Some of it's okay, but it's too much. So uh, whenever I talk to this about people, everybody, 100% of adults go, man, I wish I came out of school with great social skills, public speaking skills, persuasion skills, scale, sales skills, reading people skills. Which brings me to my third point. The third thing that would revolutionize the education system is if there was personalities, a series of personality tests, because different tests aren't 100% accurate and they test for different things. Uh, you know, these tests would go a battery of tests that student, remember students got from age six years old to 18 in the junior high and high school and elementary system. So you're talking, you got 12 years to administer these tests. You don't have to do them all in one day. Then you would take the results and adjust accordingly what you teach the kids and how. Two things, what you teach them and how. Some people from personality tests, like in the Hexaco test, which is the most scientific cutting edge test developed in 2000, it's a variation of the big five test, it's widely respected, there's correlations. People low in conscientiousness, high in conscientiousness, low in agreeableness, high, high in extroversion versus introversion. They do better and they're attracted to different fields. Social facilitation skills, uh, practical manual labor skills, accounting, management of people, all that uh, should be based on personalities. Going back to the refund system, the second you made universities have refunds, mark my words, they would start doing a battery of personality tests because they don't want to give money back, right? And so they would say, hey, Bob, you were wanting to get an Egyptian, you know, medieval history major. Why don't you do that as a minor and I'll teach you something else, you know, like why don't you learn how to open a restaurant or learn how to do sales or something. I mean, look, let's be practical about life. You're going to have to know some down to earth skills to make it. Everybody does. It should be teaching real estate, investing, all these things should be taught. These are the kind of things that you're going to need from the day you graduate high school until the day you die. And because these three things have not been implemented, um, you see massive problems in the world, whether it be economic growth issues, whether you see recession, even wars and crime at the root of this, the issues around the world in inner cities, uh, it, you know, all this stuff that you see in the news now, you know what fixes this? People who have a livable income don't commit much crime. Occasionally they do, and there's some white collar crime, but trust me, the majority of crime is desperate people. And sometimes you can't blame them. If you're hungry and you got to feed your family, you res and you have no options because the education system doesn't give you any options, people resort to all kinds of things that affect all of us, whether you're rich or poor. So this is a plan that will help the poor, the middle class, the rich. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't differentiate by gender or, or sexuality or anything. This is the cutting edge way that education should be taught. And going back to the personality test, not only would you find out what people have natural affinities for using personality tests, but in addition, you would teach them differently. Not everybody learns the same way. It's been, it's a fact. Some people are audio learners, some are visual, some are kinesthetic. You know, Peter Drucker talks about this in his uh, book, Managing Oneself. You have to know how you learn. But if the education system is always sit at a desk, listen to a lecture, have a book, it's already failed the majority of people because the majority of people do not learn that way. And so by doing personality tests, you could, dip, you could separate out how people learn. And this was impossible 100 years ago because you might be listening and go, Ty, that's not practical. 
oh, it's practical now. We have computers. We could put man on the moon. We have GPSs. We have the, the this iPhone here. Where is my iPhone? Scratch that on all my iPhone. <laughs> oh, here it is. This phone right here uh, is more powerful than a rocket ship was in the 1960s. You telling me with all the technology we can't use computers, we can't use iPads, we can't use tablets, we can't use live streaming to bring customized education? This is completely uh, uh, false and giving up too easy. And what happens is the education system has inertia and it's just doing business with minor changes. There's been some improvement in the education system naturally as, as we've progressed but it's not enough it hasn't kept up with the pace of of advancement in the world in other fields think how much better medicine is medicine is indistinguishable between what would happen to you in the 1800s in the 1800s had you uh been injured you might have had leeches put on you you would have had doctors who didn't wash their hands they didn't understand germ theory i mean it was prehistoric now if you you know, get a cut and you go into the hospital, we understand, it, it's completely different. Now we take that to the education system. If you go back to a classroom in the 1800s versus today, they almost indistinguishable. You got students sitting there listening to a teacher for not just one, two, three years, but decade or more. You gotta keep up, you gotta keep up. So just thought, I thought I'll record that. Sounds like there's a crazy fire going on back here if you go to tylopez.com i've got some of the practical torch uh courses that i teach on starting businesses and all that stuff and like i said i practice what i preach they involve personality tests they involve practical skills and they involve full refunds and so you know i don't want to be a hypocrite and i think the future will be private education i think that university is going to be too slow and more and more people are going to go online to learn and you already see that the online education system grew from 50 uh, billion dollars in 2014 to double that about 100 to 110 billion in one year so good news you know people catching the trend so check out tylopez.com look at some of the courses I have or look at different there's other uh, providers of online education what you didn't learn in school you can come back and learn now so you don't have to give up hope hopes there opportunities are there so leave a comment below I read an article that said the three biggest regrets people have is who they marry occupation they select and ed and the education they had all three of those could be changed and improved by these three little points that I talked about so leave a comment below what's your opinion does the school system need to be improved on? Do you think it's fine? And if you think it should be changed, give me some specific things I'd love to hear and learn from you as to what you think will make education better. The future of education can't be found in a gadget or an app or a program or a product. It doesn't require a think tank full of pundits. No, the future of education can be found in your classroom. Your classroom is packed with creative potential. You have all the innovation you need right there in your room. And you have the power to make it happen. It's what happens when you experiment. It's what happens when you give your students voice and choice. It's what happens when you abandon the scripted curriculum and take your students off road in their learning. It's what happens when you teach to your students rather than teaching to the test. It's what happens when you unleash the creative power of all of your students when you make the bold decision to let them make things and design things and solve problems that they find relevant. Sometimes it's messy and even confusing. It often looks humble. But understand this, that every time your students get the chance to be authors or filmmakers or scientists or artists or engineers, you are planting the seeds for a future that you could never have imagined on your own. That's the power of innovative teachers. That is why the future of education is you. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe and to like it and to leave a comment about something innovative and creative and amazing that you're seeing in your school or in your classroom or in your child's classroom. The way we learn today is just wrong. Learning needs to be less like memorization and more like Angry Birds. Ah. 
50% of school dropouts named boredom as the number one reason that they left. How do we get our kids to want to learn? The challenge is in the old style educational system, you start at an A and every time you get something wrong, your score gets lower and lower and lower. In the gaming world, it's just the opposite. You start with zero, and every time you call up something right, your score gets higher and higher and higher. It completely flips the way we currently learn. Think about what you do when you play a game. You observe the problem. You form a hypothesis, and then you test that hypothesis. And ultimately, you learn, and you try it again. It's actually the same as the scientific method. The trick is to make kids as addicted to learning as they are to gaming. I want to share a story, one of the most compelling examples that I've ever heard of gamification. Proteins are the basic building building block of your cells. And for the longest time, predicting how a protein folds has been a very difficult problem. A group of graduate students asked the question, is the ability of the human brain to able to predict protein folding better than the computer? And they created a game called Fold It, in which the user gets a protein and then begins to manipulate it and fold it on the screen. The lower the stress and strain on that protein molecule, the better their score. Well, it turned out that humans were much better at folding proteins. It turned out that the best protein folder was a woman who during the day was an executive secretary at a rehab clinic and who at night became the best protein folder on the planet. Gaming outperforms textbooks in every area. Customized gaming teaches creativity and innovation. Pilots and surgeons trained on video games outperform those who are not. So where is this all going? The future of education is an AI that can teach my child or your child and gives them an education that's so personalized, so perfect, that the wealthiest people on the planet would never be able to afford it. That's a future in which education is much better than we can possibly ever imagine.